artists who use performance, choreography, and visual arts, among other things, to express yourself and to address society's issues. What is one word that best describes yourself? Emptiness. I. Some people think emptiness is uh, always related to a monk, but I'm think I'm a hippie monk. <laughs> I I always love to um, study how to be in emptiness in the environment. The empty is empty, but it's everything. So I want to accept all the um, different inspirations from the outside and motivate my body to create more works. Unrestricted body language is the central element of Chimin Liu's art. After 17 years of dance training and performing, she expresses her creativity naturally through improvised, straightforward movements done in non-traditional theatrical spaces. Chimi moved out of China in 2009 to address, on a global level, yet another vital point of what she does, social responsibility. Artistically, she feels responsible to address people's social concerns, to question those issues, and to provide answers. You have been training for a long time, and about 17 years yeah. of you know dance training and performance. How has that changed over the years? How how was it when you first started? How do you feel about performance mm -hmm. now and? dance, choreography? So, when I was in high school, I started to uh, kind of have an uh, awareness of what is contemporary art and what is contemporary dance. And I compelled it to that. Uh -huh. I love that. And I, I love the word about ex expression, express yourself mm -hmm. and how. So, I decided to come here to start the dance. And after two years, I feel I really upset because I feel like America is not the, the place that I want to go. Because I feel like my style, my purpose of learning dance was in Europe, not in here. So why? Like, what was about America that? Because we learn, um, because we learn body fir first. But yeah. actually, in China, I already deal with everything. <laughs> so, so I was uh, learning like more than. Instagram, like all the uh, modern dance, but mm -hmm. it's not what I call it's uh, contemporary dance. It's different, but it's related, but the, it's not what I want. So I start to uh, just learning by myself. I I watch some videos mm -hmm. from the internet or whatever, and then I really um, study why. I don't like it, <laughs> and uh, why I like this, not the. This. So I trying to analyze um, the language under my skin. So I start to choreograph because I always feel like it's. Um, I want. I just want to create, and uh, want to contribute to the idea. Yeah. And uh, contribute to the understanding of my idea, not only just the idea. Idea. It's about the how I use my perspective and mm -hmm. to present the idea and then to present my understanding of what it's art. Yeah. After discovering how powerful her own body language could be, Ji Ming started to explore a new artistic conception called 4A Concept. By finding creative motivation in that idea and using her body to shine a light on modern problems, Ji Ming got attention from lots of people and many companies like Twitter. At Twitter's headquarters, she created 328 feet of binary code, an attempt to connect and to address the inequalities of tech and art. Anywhere, anybody, everything, anytime. So I just start from there and be more specific and uh, study my body from from the really um, universe, from the universe, and then trying to um, dig into the universe and then translate the image, the message to the public, to the mm -hmm. people. So it's kind of like the the foundation, the, the foundation of my uh, research. Uh -huh. And nowadays, I I'm I'm still thinking about why I'm here. Why, how I can um, do something else yeah. and help people to understand the performance or um, 
the contemporary dance or the somewhere between the contemporary dance and the performance art. You just did um, a performance which I feel like it relates to the 4A concept because it was improvised mm -hmm. to address the California drought mm -hmm. problem. And you basically, I mean, you talked about water, you mm -hmm. danced about water mm -hmm. almost. What was, how did that come to mind? What was behind that? From the dance training, we always want to move like water. Uh -huh. You want to be fluent when you're doing the movement without any stops. So it, it, it just go from one point and straight to the another destination. I think it's from the voice mm -hmm. of my body because uh, my our body maybe 60% is yeah. uh, made by water. It's the most essential thing yeah. ever. And it's a really important um, resource. Yeah. So I was trying to thinking um, how to be honest with the voice inside of my body. So how did you want to get attention to the California draft problems with the video, which was completely, mm -hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong, but it was completely spare of the moment, improvised, right? Yeah, yeah. I did three, um, three different projects, actually, yeah. It's, uh, um, the one is a dance movie, mm -hmm. the second it's a performance, it's a duo. Um, I made it in um, a festival, art festival. And the third one, it's a, a, a performance, a solo performance. Uh -huh. I bring my water from California to here. Oh, yeah. So at that moment, I was thinking about the social issue and about the culture, about the, the difference between the East Coast and the West Coast, even the East and the West yeah. in the world. I mean, so I was thinking, I always think a lot of ideas. It's never been single. Um, concept behind one project. It's always been um, a mixed, multi-layered media um, ideas. And it's like our society, our life, life is always been, it's um, not simple, <laughs> but yeah. maybe it's simple. And uh, how we can put all the things together, it's always like that. Another big project that you have done recently was uh, 328 feet of oh, art piece of binary coding. <laughs> And you don't even know how to code, right? But you wanted to use your language to kind of make a connection to people who are immersed in coding in San Francisco, which is such a big spot for coding and for all of that. And how did that come about? How, what was the idea that you pitched to Twitter? Like, how did that happen? Um, so my husband, uh, he's an engineer, and a lot of my friends I met in San Francisco, they know how to code. But as an artist, yeah. I don't really know what's that. So, and that's uh, because I don't know. So I'm in, interested in the, the coding. And uh, we use technology every single day. Yeah. But we don't know how the app. Not that yeah, 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 yeah. How that comes from. And uh, um, through uh, my husband's friend, we contact um, to, the, to the company in Twitter. And uh, um, they like it. So I was like, yeah, I, I will be there. And uh, they offered me a desk, offered me 10 days residency, kind of just being there and uh, I coding with the tech people and in the space and uh, have a conversation with the people because they're really curious about like, oh, why are you here? What are you doing here? So I was like, okay, I'm coding as you guys. And they're like, and, and, and look, what's that? <laughs> so they're kind of really curious and uh, I think they, they think I'm really strange in that environment, but in my perspective, I mean, but my uh, idea is always kind of in dirt yeah. to an environment that does not belong to me, and I want to kind of bother people and uh, make them think about uh, why I'm here. <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of crea creating a bridge yeah. from the art and to the technology, not really technology, but it's uh, the thinking, different thinking, but uh, I believe because um, creating creative thoughts, uh, no matter from science or, um, or art. It's all come from this, the same place. Mm -hmm.